do you have one of these trucks? A 91 through 97 Toyota Land Cruiser or a Lexus LX450? If you do, I bet you at some point your power seats stopped working. If you have the power seats. You take this knob here, you push it forward, you push it back, you hear some grinding, maybe you don't. Does something, does nothing, who knows. But at some point they all stop working and it's a really easy fix. I'm gonna show you how to fix them today. The first thing we wanna do is unbolt the seat and get it ready to remove from the truck. You're gonna have two bolts down here in the front, one right there and one right here. And you're gonna have two bolts in the back and one of them's under this cover and one of them's under that cover. These covers pop up pretty easily. Sometimes if you can get your finger under there, you can snap them up by hand. And uh, if not, just grab a little screwdriver and you can pop them up. Um, those are gonna be 14 millimeter head bolts on the front and the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ratchet, undo those, and then we'll come back on how to remove the seat. Now we've got the two bolts out for the front right there and right there. And we also have the two bolts out for the rear right there and right there. So if you rock the chair back and forth, you can see it's loose now. And what we're gonna wanna do is turn your key to the accessory or the on position and tilt the uh, back of the chair forward as far as it'll go. Then take your headrest out you uh, push this little button right here and you'll be able to take the headrest. Out. That'll make it easier for you to wiggle this thing out of the car. And then you wanna take your steering wheel and tilt it all the way upward. There we go, that's up. And now you're gonna to want to make sure you open your door all the way. Make sure there's nothing behind you that's gonna trip you or you know make it difficult for you to get this seat out. You're gonna have electric plugs on the bottom. Grab the front tilt it backwards and peek underneath and you'll have one or multiple connectors going to the seat. Uh, this seat's only got one right here. So we want to unplug this guy and check if there's anything else plugged into it. Uh, go ahead and unplug anything that might get snagged or in the way. And then we're going to gently pull the seat out of the car. Now that we've got our seat out of the truck, I brought it in the garage and set it up to where I can work on it a little more easily. Um, for the forward and backward motion, which is what generally stops working on these seats, there's a motor right here, and inside there's a rod, and that's attached at both ends, here and here, to these long threaded rods, if you can see in the video, that... Uh, attached to a bracket on the seat that uh, has teeth that grab the threads then the same on this side and then have a stopper on the end of them and when this main rod turns there's a gear here and a gear here that turn these threaded rods and those threaded rods push against the teeth on this bracket and this bracket and move the seat backward and forward now, when these stop working, sometimes you'll notice that just one side of your seat will go back and forth and the other side is not doing anything or vice versa. This side moves and that side doesn't. Or sometimes the entire thing just stops moving back and forth. Usually this problem starts because one of a couple of reasons, uh, the plastic gears inside here and here, they're uh, not metal, they're not terribly strong, they're plastic. So. Uh, they do wear out and the teeth will eventually um, not have enough uh, material on them left and they'll start slipping. So that sometimes happens. The other thing I've seen happen more commonly, I've had a lot of these trucks over the years, is that this threaded uh, plastic cap screw um, will start backing out and fall out eventually. And once that falls out, the rod that goes through the middle of the shaft will not stay centered um, it'll move around it'll wiggle and then the teeth on the gears won't catch and they'll either 
not catch at all and it won't do anything or they'll catch just enough to where it strips the teeth on the gear um, so if you look under your seat and this cap is missing which it is a lot of times then you know exactly what the culprit is and you probably need to replace the cap and more than likely both of those gears if the cap's still there and um, the, uh, the the seat's still not working and you see you hear the motor working um, it might just be the gears that are stripped out either way what you want to purchase is the cap and two gears and while you're in there just go ahead and replace them all because you're gonna have it apart anyway uh, so first thing we're gonna do is start taking some of this apart assembly is remove this plastic panel underneath the front lip of the seat uh, there's two Phillips head screws one right here and one right there we've got the plastic cover off and you can see what's there now next we want to remove these two allen head bolts this one here this one here and also the other two right here this one and this one now that we've got those allen head bolts off here and off of here i just place them in this little plastic cover just to keep everything in one place the next thing we need to do is undo this shaft assembly the motorized shaft assembly from the two threaded rods that are there uh, the threaded rods attach to the shaft assembly with two nuts on the end one's right here and one is right here now there's no way to really hold this um, it doesn't have any flat spots you can grip and also if you notice on the other end these two plastic end caps are here so what I'm going to do is first remove these two plastic end caps. There's two Phillips screws on each one right there and right there. We're going to undo those Phillips screws and uh, make sure they're removed from the threaded rods. That way the plastic end caps are not damaged. And the next thing we're going to do is put some vice grips on the unthreaded portion of the collar right here. One at a time, put vice grips here, undo this nut scripts here and undo this nut. One other thing that you really have to be careful with is to uh, not allow these threaded rods to turn and change position while you're doing all of this. Otherwise, if this one turns, it may push this side of the seat back or forward and it won't line up with that one and vice versa. If your seat is already crooked and not straight, what you want to do is take this opportunity to straighten it out and the easiest way I've found to do that is to measure from this collar here to here on both sides and make sure they're set the same. Now, once we have all this apart, you can turn the threaded rods and adjust those back and forth so that you have the seat assembly straight. I've got the two plastic end caps off of the threaded rods and went ahead and put them aside for safekeeping. Now I've got a set of vice grips right here on this rod. You can see how easily the rod turns. So again, make sure you don't change the position of it. Keep it in the same uh, position as far as rotation go. Now that we have the nuts off the end of the two threaded rods, we want to remove these two shaft assemblies from the motorized uh, rod there. And if you just take your hand on this entire assembly, pull it out, it should come right out. And then the same on the other side, it'll come right out. Here's a tip that'll save you some headache that I didn't do. Uh, this collar here and this collar here, they thread onto the motor and then they thread onto this part of the housing right here. Go ahead and unscrew those two before you try to yank this thing out and it'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, I had to, it, it bends, it's very flexible, but I had to really pressed to, to get this thing out and it would have been easier if that was already unthreaded and, and just popped off so unthread that thing try to kind of wiggle it out um and and that'll probably come out the shaft will come out of the um the collar here once you get the two phillips screws out of here and here wiggle this top piece of the housing around a little bit to loosen it up and pull straight up and there's your gear and uh, I'm not sure if you can see in the video. Let's see. You can see the teeth are eating up pretty bad. So 
We're gonna pull that guy off and then replace it with a new one. So let's pull that cap off and see what kind of condition it's in. So I went to uh, pull this guy out and it looks like somebody glued this end cap onto the shaft, probably because it had popped out and they thought that would be a good idea. Uh, this is what a new gear looks like. And I'm not sure if you can see in the video, uh, there's the threads, how they should look. And there's this guy, there is no threads left on it at all. So let's get this guy cleaned up, pull that. I've got the old cap off and I went ahead and cleaned up that shaft. I greased uh, all around it. I greased the threads for the screw uh, that turned there and put a little dab of grease on the end. And then I tried to clean all the grease off of the threads from the inside of this housing. So that's all ready to go. Next, we're gonna pull the gear off of here. So I went ahead and pulled that off of this and all of the grease and plastic over the years looks like almost created a gluey sticky type film so i got that all cleaned up uh, i'm gonna get that side cleaned up as well and then we'll slide a new gear onto the shaft this guy is ready to go um, before you put this washer back on grease both sides of it real lightly uh, and then we're going to grease the shaft and everything and uh, get this guy put back into the housing. Uh, get the two Phillips screws along with the cap put back on. It's gonna be a nice, clean, fresh new assembly, good as new. Gear and the shaft are back in. Screws are back on. Now we're gonna do the end cap. And voila, that side is ready to go. Now we're going to do the other side and then we'll get everything put back together and we should have a working power seat. Now we've got everything mostly assembled back together. This housing's back in place. We've got the rod that connects the two ends uh, of, of the seat and creates that one long uh, shaft that's attached to the motor. Um, went ahead and put these plastic caps back on with the two Phillips screws at the end of each of the rods. Uh, put your um, Allen bolts in, two here and uh, two right here. And put your nut on the end of the shaft there and there. Don't forget the washer behind it. And make sure everything looks good. And uh, I did go ahead and measure from here to here and from here to here. This rod was pushed about a quarter inch further out than that one. So I adjusted this one before I put it back into the housing with the gear. And the last thing we need to do is put our cover back on with the two Phillips bolts and the seat will be ready to go back in the car. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for you and you got a little bit better of a visual to fix the seat in your LX570 or Land Cruiser, I think 1991 through 97. This is the time frame where the power seats had these issues. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Make sure to check the links in the description to get the exact uh, gears and end caps that are the perfect fit. And see you next time.